This is a review of the Star Wars The Last Jedi. So, hello everybody, this is me, Kevin, and uh, today, this is strange because I've said like many times that I'm not going to uh, make another movie review. But seeing how some people ask me to do a review and I want to do it right this time, I'm going to make a review this time. And every photo and uh, music stuff that I added here is doesn't belong to me. It belongs to the people who made it, like Disney and uh, Lucasfilm and stuff. So today, we're going to review Star Wars The Last Jedi. So this is the eighth movie in the Star Wars franchise and the second movie in the sequel trilogy, as people call it. So the best part of The Last Jedi was Luke Skywalker. So in the be near the beginning of the film, we see Rey handing the, the lightsaber to Luke Skywalker. And what he does next is he just throws out the lightsaber and wants nothing to do with the Jedi anymore. Now the reason for this is because, as we know from some visions in The Force Awakens, that he does not want anything to do with the Jedi because he because Kylo Ren destroyed his temple and killed his students when he was going to confront him. But when we find out later that he, that the reason that happened was because he was going to kill him after he found out Kylo turned to the dark side. So he was going to kill him, but when he turned on that lightsaber, he was filled with shame. But the damage was done, and Kylo then destroyed his temple after he... I guess made Luke unconscious or thought he killed him. And after Ray tells him that he he could still be saved, he realizes he realizes he was wrong about many things and that he should learn from it. So later near the end of the film when the rebels are now in peril or and almost destroyed, Luke comes in and is ready to fight Kylo Ren. And we get a pretty awesome battle scene and we see them fight each other. It's pretty cool. But then when Luke says, like, strike him down and he'll become more powerful, Kylo decides to run to give the killing blow. But it turns out he actually was, he actually was projecting himself there and he was still on the island. But the reason he did this is because he was actually distracting Kylo and giving the rebels time to run away and, and be able to escape him. So after he uh, finished distracting Kylo from the resistance, we then see him weak and fall to the floor. And this is when we realized his death has came and that he, and then what happened was next was the most powerful moment in The Last Jedi was when Luke stood up and looked at the two sons that, that he was looking at. And it was so powerful and so great. And then he soon dies and his body disappears which and this was one of the most powerful moments of the last jedi and probably the best scene the good thing in the last jedi was ray and she was really good just like in the force awakens and daisy ridley played made a good performance for ray and uh she was probably better in here than the force awakens another great character in this movie is kylo ren and he's actually becoming one of my favorite star wars villains ever and you can understand everything he's going through and why he is this, I guess, bad slash good person. Really good performance and really good, great character. I also liked how they had the forced connections between Rey and Kylo Ren. And, you know, they are having these conversations. And you can really see their viewpoints. You can understand Kylo Ren's viewpoints. And you also can understand Rey's viewpoints. And you can really, you can really tell they're like, talk, they're talking to each other. And you you're really starting to see that they're having a conversation. So it's really good, and I really like that. Also, I liked it in The Last Jedi how they killed off Snoke because in The Force Awakens, he was just like, oh, I'm the bad guy here, you know? I'm the bad guy who looks ugly and doesn't look cool. But here, he's a bit better, and, and when they finally kill him, I was like, yeah, pretty good, yay. And then we also get one of the best fight scenes we ever seen where Ray and Kylo Ren 
team up to kill Snoke's guards, and it's a really cool and awesome fight. What happens next is after the Resistance destroys Starkiller Base, they soon begin their evacuation because the First Order is soon going to be going after them. And sure enough, they do, and they start fighting, but the, lots of things go down, and lots of casualties, and both sides end up having heavy losses, but mostly with the Resistance, and also later on in the movie, the the Resistance soon suffer, suffer some more casualties when their leader their leaders start getting destroyed when uh, Kylo Ren destroyed their command base where most of their leaders are, only with Princess Leia surviving and with some other leaders. I also liked uh, Poe and uh, Admiral Vice Admiral Holdo. They were both good, but uh, there was this one scene where Admiral Holdo decided to stay at the ship when uh, they were going to evacuate the ship. And then the Resistance was starting to suffer lots of casualties. And uh, Vice Admiral Holdo decided to do what she decided to do was she decided to turn around her ship and light speed into Snoke's ship and destroy it in half. And it was really cool and a good and a great sacrifice. I liked the Octu uh, Island scenes, you know, you know, with Luke Skywalker and Rey and uh and uh, you know the trainings and the force connections. I think it's that was that was probably one of the, I think that was part of the good half of the movie, and it was really good. And speaking of the Octu Island, I also really like the Porgs. I mean, even though they're just there for comedy and stuff, I really like the Porgs. They're, you know, cute, fluffy animals, and they don't stretch out any farther than that. And they're. They're not that bad. They're not as annoying as Charger Binks and some other characters, but it's not that bad. I also liked lots of surprises in, in this movie, like Snoke's death, the inclusion of Yoda in this movie, and some, and some other surprises. And there are also two of the biggest surprises in the movie. Now I want to talk each of them one at a time. So the first surprise, another surprise that I'd like to talk about is that Ray's parents were nobody. So before The Last Jedi came out, there was so many fan theories and stuff going around, like, is she a Solo, is she a Kenobi, or is she a Skywalker? And the answer is, she, her parents were a nobody. And I like that inclusion because it makes the universe more bigger because up until this point, everyone, every guy or gal we see in this universe is... Skywalker, a Solo, or whatever else. I think that's it. I mean, and it, and I like this change because it makes it more, make the universe more bigger, and it also brings the message like, you know, greatness doesn't come from your parentage; it comes from you and stuff. It's it's pretty good inclusion. And the second biggest uh, surprise, or I think it would be the biggest surprise out of any other. Surprise, in the last chat, and that is Luke Skywalker projected himself to Crate. So, what else? What I'm talking about is I already told you guys this, but in the Battle of Crate, they went there after like the big um like crash, like between Snoke's ship and that ship of Admiral Ho Spice Admiral Holdo I was talking about. So they they're trying to signal some some uh allies so they are they're stalling so they can uh stop them from like destroying them and hopefully get their allies to help come help them so that's what's going on so they have this huge battle where they try to stall time and with the speeders and the atm6 walkers it's pretty great but when they realize um that when they realize that the allies aren't listening or picking up even though they can clearly get the message that means you know they realize that everybody's giving up hope until luke skywalker comes in and you know comes in and like you know gives a gives one last talk to, to general a and then goes out to battle and it's a pretty powerful scene it's a great fight scene like i said and it's and when luke says like you know come you know come and kill me you know, when his deed is done and after Ray like, 
saved the resistance. He, he, you know, Kylo Ren just like runs and tries to cut Luke Skywalker in half, and you realize he he's not really there. He's projecting himself from thousands of miles away, and it was pretty pretty good and pretty powerful. And uh, yeah, I I really like that big surprise. It was pretty good. And the last thing I want to add before I talk about the bad stuff of the Last Jedi, I like to add that um, Princess Le or no General Leia was really good in this movie. And uh, this is a uh, Carrie Fisher's last movie, and this is uh, General Leia's last movie. And if you guys don't know, uh, Carrie Fisher, who played Princess Leia, actually recent actually passed away last year or in twenty sixteen of December, and it's it it was it was really sad and we don't know how are they going to end her character now they're probably just going to say she that she died in episode 9 or something like she's dead but uh yeah that's the that's the last great thing i have to add about the last Jedi. now on to the negatives so one one problem it's a it's kind of a it's not really a big problem but one uh thing I have to say is while many of the jokes are pretty funny and good there are like two jokes that I feel like were not that funny to be honest and that was the uh the act two maidens or whatever the heck they're called I didn't like the joke to be honest and it was good for first viewing but on the second viewing it kind of gets annoying and uh Another thing that I didn't like with The Last Jedi was um was a new character, Rose. Now, she wasn't bad or terrible. I think she was pretty good, and uh, she had a good backstory and stuff. But my main problem, not well, the problem I had with her was, um like, at the end when uh, Finn was going to, like, uh, sacrifice himself for the, for the resistance... Like, Rose comes in and saves him. And I was like, I didn't like it. I don't know. I'm still conflicted on if I didn't like if she saved him or not. But but uh, when but uh, when uh, Finn and Rose, like, kissed, I, I didn't really felt it was deserved. And I, to be honest, I didn't buy it. And some other people didn't buy it, to be honest. So, that's that's one issue, that another issue I had with the movie. And my final criticism against The Last Jedi is the Finn and Rose subplot. And this, and this, um, this criticism has been uh, actually mostly agreed uh, worldwide, actually. Many people have said that uh, the Finn and Rose subplot, or critics and fans, I guess, that the Finn and Rose subplot was the last jedi's biggest weakness and uh the reason i'm gonna tell you guys this that the first half of the finn and rose soft plot was not very interesting and mostly i'm talking about the canto bite scene the casino if you don't know what i'm talking about but the casino canto bite scene wasn't that interesting and i think and I think it took a bit too long, and it wasn't that interesting, to be honest. And, or, I mean, I wish, I wish they made it brief, like, just like five minutes. That's it. I think I wish they did it for like five minutes, and then they'd move on. Because like, it, this is basically the subplot that Star Wars always has, like you know, like the, like the um. You know, like in A New Hope, there's the Trash Compactor, Empire, there's, uh, forgot, uh, Empire, those, the Asteroids, and, or, you know, the monster that eats the Millennium Falcon, and, uh, Return of the Jedi, there was Jabba's, but, but they were interesting, well, but some of them were interesting, while others were brief, and this one should have been brief, because, it was, I think it took away, I think it kind of detracted the story in a, a bit. And another thing I like to add is, uh, 
maybe make it more interesting. Like, maybe help develop Rose's character more. Maybe, maybe do that. Help develop Rose's character more. Maybe make the Finn and Rose kiss more believable. But I think that's my biggest problem. The second half actually got really interesting, actually. Like, with the... With them infiltrating First Order, a uh, Star Destroyer, and it was really interesting, and I liked that. But, you know, it was pretty cool, and I liked that Captain Phasma versus Finn fight. It was pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, I think it was... I think the la- I think the second half was better, while the first half was a kind of drag for the Finn and Rose subplot. But, uh, that's it. And uh, one more thing before I stop talking about my criticisms and stuff. But uh, this isn't really criticism at all. It's actually, this is actually a positive that I forgot to mention. And that is um, at the end of the movie, after the rebel, the resistance escape, you know, they're like, how can we rebuild and now? But they say like, we're good. And, you know, so what happened next was uh, we see a boy that we seen in the Canto Bite earlier, and, you know, they're talking about Luke Skywalker and stuff, and at, and then he went outside, and we figure, and then we learn he uses the Force, he has the Force when he pulls the broom to his hand, and then we see him look up the stars, hoping for adventure, like a new hope, and the great stars music and stuff was playing, and it was, it was good scene, showing that though there's there's more Jedi coming a new generation of Jedi are coming you know and that Luke Skywalker sent a powerful message and is bringing more hope to the galaxy so I think that's another great thing I like to add with the movie that I forgot to mention but uh yeah now we're gonna talk about my final thoughts and uh my grade and uh that's the review of The Last Jedi so is it the best Star Wars movie ever not really, but it is one of the best Star Wars movie I have ever seen. And this is actually, I think, the first great Star Wars movie I have ever seen in theaters. And it's, the movie is unique, but it still feels like a Star Wars movie. And I put it at number three as the best Star Wars movie. Or the third best Star Wars movie. Now, it does have problems and stuff. But it's pretty good. And uh, I would recommend you guys watching it in theaters if it's still out in theaters. Or I'd recommend you buy it on DVD if it's already out on DVD. So my grade for this movie will be an A-, minus, which is a 9 out of 10. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, my next video will be talking about 2017 movies. And uh, hopefully if you guys like these videos movie talks maybe i'll have more coming but anyway guys i hope you enjoyed this video and i'll see you later bye